In 2017, 11.4 million Americans misused opioids, and 130 on average died every day from an overdose. The U.S. opioid epidemic has been largely fueled by the abuse of prescription opioid painkillers. This has spurred intense scrutiny of the supply chain involved in their dispensing, but one player has received relatively little attention. Pharmacies. Surveys suggest that relative to physicians, pharmacists have better knowledge of whether patients abuse drugs, and they are legally required to ensure that prescription drugs are not diverted for non-medical use. Yet police and regulators perceive that pharmacies are involved in nearly 80% of all prescription drug diversion, and there is little empirical evidence on what factors affect their dispensing behavior. This paper fills that gap and studies the role of retail pharmacy ownership. Between 2006 and 2012, over 84,000 retail pharmacies existed in the U.S., with approximately 53% belonging to national chains and the remainder comprised of independents. Chains may have different incentives to comply with regulation, so the authors use pharmacy-level data to compare patterns of prescription opioid dispensing between the two groups. They find large differences. Within the same zip code, and relative to chains, independents dispense on average 39.1% more opioids and 60.5% more OxyContin, a prescription opioid that is especially prone to abuse. To show these effects are driven by the difference in ownership, this figure focuses on pharmacies who switched from being independent to being part of a chain during this period. On average, these facilities dispense 33.8% less opioids after their ownership change. Does drug diversion help account for these differences? In other words, do independents dispense more opioids because they are more likely to dispense for non-medical demand? The authors explore this using the 2010 reformulation of OxyContin. OxyContin changed the medical landscape when it was introduced in the mid-1990s. Aggressively marketed as a pain management tool, it became one of the most successful pharmaceuticals in history with worldwide sales of $35 billion. But the increase in OxyContin prescriptions went hand in hand with an increase in drug abuse. In 2007, Purdue Pharma pled guilty to having falsely advertised the drug's safety, and in 2010, the FDA approved a reformulated abuse deterrent form. This reduced the non-medical demand for OxyContin while, crucially, having no impact on its therapeutic benefit or price. This figure shows the impact of the reformulation on dispensing at chain and independent pharmacies. This line shows when the abuse deterrent form was approved by the FDA, while this shows when it was first delivered to pharmacies. Pre-2010, and consistent with the previous findings, Independents dispense more OxyContin than chains. But while the reformulation had relatively little impact on chains, it triggered a 19.7% decrease in dispensing by independents. There is no concurrent break in dispensing for other opioid painkillers, which strongly suggests that the decline in independents' OxyContin dispensing is driven by the reformulation, and that non-medical users account for a meaningful portion of this gap. The estimates imply that over one-third of higher dispensing in independent pharmacies is due to drug diversion. So, why are independents more likely to be involved in diversion? The paper identifies two mechanisms, the first of which relates to competitive pressure. Over the last two decades, Competition and consolidation have narrowed profit margins, especially for independents, and the results show they are more likely than chains to resort to drug diversion to compensate for this loss. 
relative to the average response of a chain pharmacy, independents respond to an additional competitor within a one mile radius by increasing their dispensing of OxyContin. These effects are concentrated in the period prior to the drug's reformulation, which suggests they reflect an increased leniency in dispensing for non-medical demand. Beyond these competitive effects, a major difference between independents and chains is the likelihood that the pharmacist is also the owner. Pharmacists at chains are employees who follow corporate rules and whose compensation is mostly predetermined. In contrast, many independents are owned by a pharmacist. This means the person at the window not only has more discretionary power than a regular employee, they also have greater financial incentive to dispense more. To show this affects the likelihood of drug diversion, this figure focuses on independent pharmacies that operate multiple stores and compares dispensing at branches versus headquarters as owners most likely work at the latter. Pre-2010, headquarters consistently dispense more OxyContin than branches, but this difference evaporates after the drug's reformulation. This implies that relative to branches, headquarters dispensed more for non-medical demand, which is consistent with the idea that pharmacist ownership can lead to more drug diversion. And so, this paper documents how retail pharmacies have contributed to the opioid epidemic and raises several issues around competition and consolidation. Policy debates often emphasize the downside of large corporations, for example, their exertion of market power to increase prices or reduce quality, but large firms may also be more likely to comply with regulation. As seen here, this can have serious consequences for consumer welfare and should be further explored in other settings. To read more on this topic, you can check out the paper's references to other related work. This includes research on the opioid epidemic, competition between large and small firms, and the effect of competition on illegal behavior.